Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. Today in this module we will study about waste sources and its generation rates. The learning objectives of this module include sources of solid waste generation, waste generation rate. You will also understand about per capita waste generation in Indian cities, municipal solid waste generation in Indian cities and techniques to estimate waste generation rate and factors that affect waste generation. As we all know solid waste is generated from human and animal activities. The amount of waste generation is not same throughout the world. They differ from place to place and from country to country. It also differs based on their characteristics, the source of generation and the type from where it is generated and the physiochemical properties. In this module we will be discussing in detail about the sources from where the waste is generated, how to calculate the per capita waste generation and the factors influencing waste generation. The term solid waste refers to useless or unwanted substances that is of no longer any use to the owner. Solid wastes are generated due to human activity when the material is considered as useless or unwanted or has no value any longer. In connection with that, solid waste rates may differ from community to community, from country to country depending on their lifestyle, financial status, industrial structure and other techniques which are used to minimize the waste, example reduce, recycle, recover etc. The various sources from which the solid waste are generated is depicted in this figure. It includes institutional waste, industrial waste, commercial waste, residential waste, construction and demolition waste, treatment plant sites and municipal services. Now residential waste are waste which are produced from the household. They are of four different types. They are household waste, garden waste, bulky waste and household hazardous waste which are generated from a single family or a multi-family or a single family housing colony. It consists of both organic and inorganic waste. Who is responsible for the disposal of this type of waste? It is the tenant or the owner who is answerable for the disposal of this particular solid waste. Now commercial waste are waste which originate from various locations. They include shopping mall, marriage halls, complexes, cinema theatres, restaurants, hotel and motels. It includes both combustible and non-combustible waste. Customer, site manager and owners are responsible for the proper disposal of commercial waste. Institutional waste are waste which are generated from public and government organizations. Example, schools, colleges, hospitals, office and research and development organizations. It consists of combustible and non-combustible waste. However, the medical waste which is generated from these offices, government or public offices, it has to be handled and separately. Students, staff, doctor, patients and head of the institute are responsible for the proper disposal of solid waste generated from institutional area. Institutional waste that are generated from two different locations, especially small and large scale industries are categorized as industrial waste. Solid waste consisting of heavy metal, oil, paint and lubricant come under this category. The waste that is generated contains organic, inorganic and hazardous waste. They are toxic to human life and should be handled very carefully. Sometimes large scale industrial waste are used as raw material for small scale industries. Employers and employees both are responsible for proper disposal of this particular waste. The next type of waste is the agricultural waste, the waste that are derived from crop and plant harvesting, waste accumulated in orchards and vineyards and waste which are generated from slaughterhouses are categorized under agricultural waste. In several locations, the public face a lot of problem due to the disposal of animal manure. Who is responsible for this particular waste? It's the renter or the proprietor of who is owning the farm is answerable for the disposal of this particular waste. Next type of waste is municipal waste which is generated from various municipal services. The term municipal solid waste refers to solid waste from roads generated from roadside area and public garden collected during sweeping, 
roadside waste collection containers, landscapes, dead animals and automobile parts. It may consist of both organic and non-organic substances. Municipality labor, municipality staff and government officials are responsible for the proper disposal of this particular waste. The waste which are generated from various wastewater treatment plants like domestic or common effluent treatment plants are categorized as treatment plant waste. It mainly consists of organic matter as such as sludge which is biodegradable. It is generally used as a substrate for biogas generation in an anaerobic digestion process. Solid waste generated should be disposed with proper care and the plant technician, manager and site supervisor are in charge of the disposal. Construction waste comes from construction of new buildings, repair and remodeling works. Likewise, demolition waste comes from bridge, raised building, sidewalks and broken out streets. The waste collected includes steel, concrete, electrical tool, wiring materials, broken plastic, glass and reinforced steel. Workers, site supervisors and project man managers are responsible for proper and safe disposal of construction and demolition waste. This table summarizes the different waste which we have discussed so far. So from the table you can see what are the different types of sources and what are the waste from where it is generated, what are the different types of waste which is included and who is the person which is who are responsible for the proper and safe disposal of this particular waste. Now let's discuss about the waste generation rate. How do you define waste generation? Waste generation is defined as the rate of change of quantity of waste generated with respect to a stipulated time. The characteristic quantities, volume and composition of solid waste generated may differ from country to country and between urban and rural areas. It depends mainly upon customs, climatic conditions, lifestyle and the economic standard of an area. The per capita waste generated by the Indian cities is summarized in table 2. And also the quantity of municipal solid waste that is generated from various metro cities and state capitals are summarized in table 3. From this table it is clearly evident that with increase in population the quantum of waste which is generated increases. For example if you see a population of 0.1 to 0.5 million results in the production of 210 gram waste per capita per day and a population above 5 million results in the generation of 500 gram per capita per day. Table 3 describes or summarizes the amount of municipal solid waste generated from various metro cities and state capitals. According to the table, the maximum amount of waste generation is in Delhi and it is also clearly visible that with increase in the number of years, the amount of waste generation has constantly increased. Next to Delhi, the highest amount of waste generation is in Chennai. The lowest amount of waste generation is found in Kavrati, just which shows just 2 tons per day. Similarly, the table also summarizes the amount of waste generation in other metro cities and state capitals. You should also know how to estimate or calculate the amount of waste generation. There are certain techniques which are used for calculating the rate of waste generation. The quantity of solid waste generated are typically estimated on the basis of data collected by a survey conducted on characterization of solid waste or from previous statistical reports. Based on that, you have three ways by which waste generation is calculated. One is the load count analysis. Second is your weight volume analysis and third is material mass balance analysis. In load count analysis, the number of individual loads and the corresponding waste characteristics are noted down for a, over a specific period of time. The waste characteristic may include the nature of waste and the amount of volume generated. In weight volume analysis, the volume of solid waste collected in the truck is weighed and the weight of each load will give you a sample data. And similarly, the number of loads and time period are also taken into account and it is calculated. The last type is your material mass balance analysis. In this method, the mass solid waste is analyzed in a system boundary or controlled volume. 
to analyze the rate of generation and movement of waste with any grade of consistency to execute a complete material mass balances analysis of individual kind of waste is very very essential from varied type of sources the mass of solid waste that is entering into the system should be equal to the mass of solid waste leaving the system this figure will show you the details how the material mass balance analysis is done the mass of solid waste entering into the system should be equal to mass of solid waste leaving the system as depicted in figure 2 from this figure you can see the inflow raw material as inflow and outflow in terms of combustion gases and ashes in terms of material in terms of product and in terms of solid waste this equation will tell you how the mass balance is actually done the rate of accumulation of material within the system boundary is equal to rate of inflow of material into the system boundary minus rate of outflow of material into the system boundary plus rate of generation of material within the system boundary to simplify accumulation is equal to inflow minus outflow plus generation symbolically it is represented dm by dt is equal to sum of materials inflow and minus sum of materials outflow plus rate of net waste generation in kilogram per day dm by dt is the rate of change of weight of material which is stored or accumulated within the study unit it is represented in kilograms per day and sum of ma material inflow it is the sum of all materials flowing into the study unit in kilogram per day sum of m out will give you sum of all materials flowing out of the study unit in kilogram per day and the rate of net waste generation is given in terms of kilogram per day and t is the time which is measured in days now there are two basic conditions for the rate of waste generation the rate of waste generation may be positive or negative if rate of generation within the system boundary is higher than the rate of decay then it possess a positive sign rate of generation is greater than rate of decay that is positive sign similarly if rate of decay within the system boundary is higher than the rate of generation then it possesses a negative sign rate of generation is less than rate of decay that is negative sign now an example problem has been solved here to just find out how to calculate the amount of waste generated from a residential area the residential area it consists of almost 5000 residents and based on the number of vehicles number of trips volume and specific weight the waste generation can be calculated now let's see how to solve the problem the first step you have to determine the total quantity of waste which is generated the total quantity of waste in kilogram is given by number of trips into volume of waste in meter cube into the specific weight of waste in kilogram per meter cube so here in the table it is given number of vehicles number of trips volume of waste and specific weight of the waste so how will you calculate the amount total amount of waste generated in kilograms so let us take an example of first vehicle so if a vehicle whose volume is around 10 meter cube and it takes almost 15 trips to collect waste which is of a specific weight of 280 kilogram per meter cube the total quantity of waste generated will be 15 into 10 into 280 which is equal to 42,000 kilogram of waste likewise the other three can also be solved now step two would be to determine the quantity of solid waste generated per week for a city residential area which consists of 5,000 homes the quantity of waste generated is equal to total quantity in kg divided by number of homes into number of persons per home into number of day now let's assume approximately two adults and one child per home that is 2.5 people per home the quantity of waste generated will be 171600 divided by 5000 which is the number of homes into 2.5 the population or people per home into 7 7 is the number of days in a week total quantity of solid waste generated for a colony which is having 5000 homes will be 1.9611 kilogram per capita per day now let us look into the various factors which affect or influence the rate of waste generation 
the different factors which play an important role to determine the waste generation rate includes waste reduction at source, reduce, recycle, degree of recycling, socio-economic background and climatic conditions. The waste reduction at source. Reduction can be done at the source of generation through the person who is disposing the material considering it it is of no value or useless and it has to be discarded. Now let's discuss the waste reduction at source. Reduction can be done at the point of source through the person who is disposing the material considering it that it is of no more use and it has to be discarded. Second, to reduce avoidable or unnecessary packing material. Third, use the material with high durability and easy repairability so that the amount of waste will be reduced. Second type of factor is reduce. Disposable goods. Instead of disposable goods, we can use some alternate materials. Now, what are disposable goods? They include paper plate, paper bowl, cups, plastic spoons, roll of paper towels, paper napkins, etc. And durable goods. Instead of disposable goods, you can use durable goods like ceramic, plastic plate, metal spoons, glass and plastic drinking cup, dish towel and cloth napkins. This will help in the recovery of tons of paper which can save 17 trees. Reuse. Instead of buying new containers from the market, use the ones that are already in house. Cleaning and using the material over and over and again, this will also help in the reduction of waste. It will increase the lifespan of the product. For example, don't throw away the soft drink can or bottle. Instead, cover them with homemade paper, paint them and then use them as a pen stand. Next type is recycling. Materials that can be broken down or reprocessed can be manufactured into new items. They can be separated and again they can be converted into useful material by processing them. Some of the examples include glass, paper and plastic. They can be recycled into new materials. Instead of plastic covers, start using shopping bags which are made up of cloth or jute. Next important factor is the degree of recycling. Before you do recycling, you should also know what is the extent or the life period of the material which you are going to take it for further processing. For example, if you use rechargeable batteries, you can charge them and keep on reusing it again and again. Now, how the amount of waste generation depends upon the socio-economic background? We will discuss about that. The quantity of waste generation always depends upon the economic status of an individual. Huge quantity of waste is generated by high class community when compared to a middle or low class community. High class community always use more electronic devices and express their economic status like mobile phone, tablets, laptops and computers. Climatic conditions also play an important role in determining the waste generation. Temperature plays an important role in solid waste degradation. Degradation is always higher at hot and humid areas compared to cooler climate. For example, solid waste such as sludge which is available from wastewater treatment plants need a feasible temperature for the production of biogas through anaerobic digestion process. Now, to conclude or summarize, in this module we have discussed about the different types of waste which is generated from different sources. We have also studied about the per capita waste generation in various Indian cities, metro cities and state capitals. We have also learned how to calculate or estimate the amount of waste generated. Finally, we have also studied about the various factors which are influencing waste generation. Thank you.